Hello, this is Reverend George Ethiam, President of the Joint Ethnic African Baptist Churches of Texas, JEPCOT. The COVID-19 pandemic has taken more than 2.6 million lives worldwide and more than 543,000 in the United States alone. Besides the loss of lives, the loss of jobs and livelihoods has been unquantifiable. Now, in the midst of these catastrophic losses, a number of vaccines have been developed and deployed, bringing hope to countless millions around the world. But there is a problem. A great deal of information is making the rounds on social media and confusing people about the scientific and spiritual issues surrounding the vaccine, leaving many of us with the question, what is the truth? The Joint Ethnic African Baptist Churches of Texas, JEPCOT, they devoted its 2021 Leadership Summit to these issues and has produced this video to shed light on them. Please watch as the Reverend Dr. Joel Ajayi, a pastor, Bible scholar, and chaplain in one of the largest hospital systems in Dallas, Texas, spoke on the spiritual aspects of the vaccine. Yes. I just prepared this to guide our thoughts. As Dr. Farala has mentioned, there is the spiritual aspect of it, and she excellently explained some of the things that we will mention. And as you will know, science and religion, spirituality actually cannot be separated. So there are points of intersections. And for my own part, I am to address the spiritual truths about COVID-19 vaccine. And I believe I don't need an introduction, but if you need to know some aspect of me that you have not known, besides being the senior pastor of Living Faith Baptist Church. I am an hospital chaplain and I've worked hospice for 12 years in the hospice and palliative care. And I've been at Baylor University Medical Center for several years as well. And currently I am leading the supportive and palliative care section of program. So as a minister working with medical staff, so coronavirus is right on my face. And this is something that we could not deny. So I also encounter coronavirus like on a daily basis from Monday to Wednesday uh, to Friday. And just thank God that, well, I have not got it, not that because I'm smart, but I'm trying to do what scientists are telling us to do to protect myself. And as I used to tell people, actually in my office on the seventh floor where I'm located in Johnson Hospital, we have seven hospitals, uh, downtown Dallas there. The elevator that is designated to be carrying COVID patient from the emergency room to the ICUs is just right by my office. And you know what that means spiritually, what it means emotionally for me initially, before we were getting to understand it a little more, a little more. So I used to climb the stairs for the seventh floor occasionally before. But this is the funny part of it when the issue of coronavirus came and they, they, they get this elevator by my office. So that forced me to make the stairway my route to my office every day. Of course, it became a form of daily exercise more for me 
But that's part of what made me to do that every day in order to avoid that elevator. So it is uh, something that is in our world and it has spread globally and that's why they call it global pandemic. But one thing I've noticed is that as the virus has spread so fast, so information, misinformation, Dr. Farrell has mentioned some of these, I will not spend time on them. Information, misinformation have been spread all over as well. And these misinformations are complicating the fears of the pandemic so that it is becoming difficult to know who to believe and what to believe when it comes to this. And some of the examples was the issue of the sign of the bees. Dr. Farrell mentioned that I won't repeat because she explained it better than I would have. Other than I would just add that the sign of the beast is located in Revelation in chapter 13, verses 15 to 18. And the sign of the beast is explained to you how they came about the number 666 in science that just correspond with the number in the Bible. And I want to agree with uh, Dr. Farrell and emphasize that it is false. It is not true. There is nothing like that. Then it is going around too. I just received a video last week that's talking about that people are developing the vaccine to wipe out Africa, about 3, 3 million Africans. That's the goal. But that is also not true. And you know, nowadays, people doctor videos and different kinds of things, and they send them around as if they are true. Yeah. We must verify anything that we receive on the social media before we just believe it, because they are dangerous and they are misleading. Then Dr. Fowler mentioned computer chip. I won't also dwell on that as well. That is a dangerous information as well. My own task here is just to focus on the spiritual truth of COVID. As they had been uh, told us, and the first thing I want to mention is that COVID vaccine are product of science. COVID vaccine are product of science. And as I know, science is a gift of is a gift from God, from natural resources. And the Bible tells us that every perfect gift is coming from above, is given to us. So science, as we know it, deals with tangible things through human senses. And we know we have the sense of touch, sense of sight, sense of taste, sense of hearing, and sense of smell. All of these are in the realm of science. But when it comes to spiritual, we're dealing with our souls, our hearts, and relationship with God, our mind. But science is not working against religion. Science is not anti-faith. Science is part of the gift of God for us. And uh, we know pharmaceutical, uh, pharmaceutical companies have the highest good in mind, the highest good of human beings when they were producing all these vaccines. It's not to hurt, but to heal and to protect. So COVID vaccines are morally manufactured and they are morally administ administered to all human beings. And in this case, it's not just to one racial groups or but all racial groups. And the purpose is to mitigate the vicious virus as we know it. 
that is very rampant and spreading fast all over our world. My second point is that COVID vaccines are pro-faith and not anti-religion. They are supported by biblical principles. Yes, we may not go into the Bible and finding coronavirus there, but we have diseases in the Bible. And we know that the goal of God, the mission of Jesus is to heal. And when Jesus came in the world, he used different methods of healing people. Sometimes he just utter a word, such as the example of the paralysis person in Matthew chapter eight. Just say the word and the healing comes. Sometimes Jesus chose to touch people with his own fingers as in the case of the deaf and the dumb, whom Jesus poked his fingers into his ears. And after that spat on his hand and touched that person's tongue. Then there was a occasion when Jesus spat on the mud and just make the mud like a cream and put it on this blind man's eyes and told the man, go and wash yourself in the pool of Siloam. The references are there in Mark chapter seven, verses 32 to 35 and John nine, six to seven. So we also know that coronavirus vaccines are not satanic. It's godly and biblical approach to health care because God is in the mission of healing. You know, Jesus came into the world and his ministry had three tears. He taught, he preached, and he healed people. All these three are going on in our world today. And there are people who specialized in each of these and some cross, like myself, I find myself touching every part of the three because I'm in the preaching ministry as a pastor. I work in the hospital in the healing. And of course I also teach, but health care is not against religion. Health care is helping us in a godly way in a biblical way. So taking the vaccine is an obedient practice of the love your neighbor as yourself command. So taking the vaccines protect you to protect others. And Dr. Fadala mentioned this also, what it is and analyze everything, how the virus works in our body to do the messaging. So when you take the fasting, I take the fasting, I'm protecting myself, I'm protecting others who have not taken it. And the same way you are doing to protect yourself and protect others. That is what the vaccine does for us. And we need to be mindful of that as well. That it's not a matter of you or others. And I've already taken the vaccine. My first dose was in December, December 15. And I took my second dose this January 11. So the first dose fall on the same day, President Biden took his own. So, and the vaccine is meant for everybody. It's not for one part of the globe or people. It's for all people. And they have been administ administering this on all people who show up to take it. Then my last point is that COVID vaccines are volitional. COVID vaccines are volitional. You know, part of the rumor that is going around is that they're forcing people 
and I want to testify to that it is not by force. People are encouraged to willingly get it. It is for laundry. There is no coercion, no harassment to, to get it. So even in our in my own my own company, this uh, uh, was emphasized and uh, distributed among us. None of us was forced. And we have about 36,000 employees company-wide throughout the state of Texas. And Belo alone had about uh, close to 6,000 or seven. So the message came out, if you want it, we encourage it, get it, but it's not by force. So I voluntarily took it, nobody forced me. So it's not by force, people are encouraged. And people are all racist and advised and are welcome. No specific people group are targeted or forced to take the vaccine. That is what we want to bear in mind. One thing that is important is that there are some who are more of disadvantaged than the others when it comes to this coronavirus because of the situations that we are. So as I'm wrapping it up, the COVID-19 vaccines are designed for all races, not certain minority group, not certain racial group. And um, what we know is that the people of color are more vulnerable because of certain adversities that we face. Part of it, education, part of it, income, and part of it, health challenges. And that's the reason it's common among people of color. But that doesn't mean the fasting is only for us. It is designed for all people and they encourage all people to be a part of that so that you will also take it. And specific people are named and those who are more of disadvantage who could uh, get it faster, people who have underlying condition, head condition, and the elderly people, especially 65 and over, I encourage to take it. And I work in the hospital, I had opportunity to take it earlier. But without, without that, we are encouraged to, I fall in that age group as well. So it is safe and it is better to get the vaccines. And I can testify to you that three members of our family have already gotten it because we are working in the healthcare system. So the other of our daughters just got a second one yesterday. So I want to encourage everyone to know that the vaccine is for everybody. And it is not something that is against religion. It is for all of us. And everyone is encouraged to take it. This has been a production of the Joint Ethnic African Baptist Churches of Texas, JEPCOT. Thanks for watching and sharing with others.